morning y'all welcome back to twisted life and tv mine um it's a sad day it's a sad day you are here for money iced part four episode six tko i need somebody to lower the flag in spain today the flag needs to be at half mast because a tragedy has occurred <sighs> y'all i've been crying <laughs> you don't even understand how much i've been crying and i knew it was gonna happen and i'm still crying i had to put my red back on today you know to rep with the crew <sighs> so we last left off Old fake ass Bruce Willis Gandia had dropped through the ceiling behind Nairobi. So we pick up right there, right? I'm gonna tell y'all what happened. So they show, you know, the whole team rushing in trying to find him, and he's slipping through the vault, the, the vents. He dropped down on Nairobi and sneak up behind her. You know, choke her from behind. She got her machine gun. She let off a few rounds. Now everybody know he in there with Nairobi. So the crew run. They run down there. We gotta get this motherfucker. We gotta get him. They run on down there. They get there. He sends Palermo sends Denver and Rio through the vents. Okay, the vents lead to the bathroom and that was we know that's where he's at right now in the bathroom what does this fool do this fool takes Nairobi pushes her body because they you know they want to shoot they was gonna shoot at the door they was finna come in and get them so Gambia decided to shoot out at them to let them know bitches I'm here y'all ain't coming up in here right so Gandhi is shooting at us. You know, our people on the other side of the door. Like, what's going on, right? So, he takes Nairobi to the door. Smashes her head through a panel in the door. The little circular door frame, you know. That. Smashes her head through there. Why he got us smashed through there? He's steady, punching the shit out of her lungs. Now remember, she just had surgery, had a bullet removed from her lung. We just took off a piece of her lung. She was stitched up on her way back to good health. And he standing there, just ramming his fist into her lungs, making it difficult for her to breathe. Now she says she doped up on morphine. She ain't feeling much of nothing, but yes, she is, girl. We know that Roby, you just trying to be strong. I know you're just trying to be strong, girl. Because that's the type of person that you are. He strength straps her to the door. Tell this motherfucker's in the BDSM. You see how he got Tokyo hemmed up down in the in the in the in the room. Now he got hurt. Now Roby with some thick ass rope strapped to the door. Strap to the door like baby Jesus, y'all. He took her hands and nailed her ass to the fucking door. Now, he didn't put the nails through her hands, I'm going to say. But he nailed her up to the door with her head going through that hole. So everybody on the outside of the door could see she right there. Come through here if you want to. You're going to kill your friend. That's what's going to happen. You're going to kill your friend. You come through here, right? So Helsinki and Bagata out there in the hallway, they trying to talk to her. And Helsinki like, where this motherfucker at? Like, where are you at exactly on the door? Can I get through here? So Nairobi direct Helsinki to an opening right to her right side. Helsinki blast, straight through the door. Catches Gandia. Like I said, I don't know what the fuck this motherfucker's wearing. If it's Kevin or skin, what he wearing. But he don't never seem to get hurt or phased or nothing. I know when people get shot in bulletproof vests, that knocks them the fuck out for a second. That that, that shot, the gunshot, phases them and hurts them. Not Gandhi. Not Gandhi ass. Kevlar skin ass. Not him. 
Helsinki shoe student hits his ass. He said, oh, now you want to shoot at my pinky toe. It's all of nice. <laughs> now I got to whip your ass. So he takes his gun. Shoots right through Nairobi's left hand. She's like losing blood, faded in and out, but she's still talking shit to Gandhi ass. Like, okay, you little punk ass. Thought you was tough, didn't you? Me and Tokyo came in there and whooped your ass. You know, she's still talking shit like that. Gandhi and his motherfucking feelings. He don't want to be told that he got his ass whipped by two women, especially the mutt, who is what he called Nairobi. <sighs> Denver and Rio ass. Going through these vents. Making all kinds of noise. They guns hitting up against the wall. They boots. Good. Everybody know where they at. Because we all looking up like, what the fuck is going on? And so does gun there. He said, oh, y'all want to try to come through. All right. He went along that vent line. The duck. <laughs> Setting it off up in there. Setting it clean off up in there. Right? So, what he did... He said, all right, everybody going to sing. Y'all going to sing me a lullaby. And I want to hear everybody singing. If everybody, whoever ain't singing, Nairobi gets a bullet hole. She gets a hole in her. Like I said, she is already in there talking shit to him about how much of a weak ass dude he is. He was like, you know what? How about I shoot another hole in your asshole? He clicks the gun. Nothing happens. Why didn't nobody realize this motherfucker didn't have no bullets right then? Because they had said something to them. Uh, Bagata said something early on how many more clips you got in that motherfucker. He said, well, come on in here and find out. You know, y'all heard him click. Y'all could have did some shit right then. But nobody moved. Nobody moved. So, like I said, he's up there firing up there, shooting up in Rio and Denver. These motherfuckers getting lit up up there. So, they have to go to two different ends of the vent. But he made them sing so he could know exactly where Denver and Rio was at. Okay. Meanwhile, the professor's out there stressing the fuck out. Like, he can't think. He ain't got his head on tight. You know, he 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 said he he's too emotional right now. He didn't wasn't supposed to have no emotional attachments to anybody. He done fell in love with Lisbon. You know, and all these motherfuckers, he know their names now, they done became friends and shit. He wasn't supposed to have these attachments. And then come to find out, him and Nairobi. And plan on having a baby together. Actually, I said Nairobi crazy as a motherfucker. Y'all know me. I say it, I love her, but she crazy as a motherfucker. Nairobi feel like she needs family. She ain't got her son. And until she did this heist, she didn't really have familia. So she came back to say Rio because this is family. This is what family do. We are there for each other. So this is what I want to do, Professor. I want to have more kids. Whole goo gaba, my tribe. He like that's beautiful. She said, Yeah. After this is over, I'm gonna have a whole slew of kids and a whole bunch of babies running around because it's Christmas time. You know what I'm saying? And she tired of spending, you know, Christmas with just Helsinki because he don't really celebrate. So she want Christmas to be for real. She never had a Christmas when she was little. You know, she want to have like the gifts and the tree and the eggnog and the curls. She want to do all that shit. Well, she need one thing. She need Professor Sperm. He like, oh, hell to the no, no, no. That's not what we finna do. I'm not finna have no baby with you, girl. You crazy. I can't do that. She said, oh, how dare you? Your motherfucking ass has asked more of me. I have put my life on the line for you. Why? Because we're family. And you can't give me a damn sperm. You know, she talked real bad to him. Made Professor feel real fucking guilty. So he finally came in. He said, you know what? I'm going to do it. After this heist is over, we're going to go find the best in vitro fertilization nurse doctors out there. And we're going to give you a baby. And Nairobi said, we can do it that way or we can do it the traditional way. Now, you know damn well, Professor ain't going to fuck you. <laughs> but, you know, Nairobi was thinking we can do it the quick way, the least, least expensive way too. I know we out here millionaires and shit, but we ain't got to go through all that. Professor agreed to give her baby. So she goes in there, and we learn her name is Agatha. Nairobi's name is Agatha. 
she loves. She goes in there to tell Tokyo. He said yes. Tokyo, like, say what now? He said yes, girl. You about to be an auntie. So now you both all excited. They screaming. They dancing around like I'm about to be an auntie. Hey, girl. Hey, what's up with that, right? He said, not only are you gonna be the auntie, I'm gonna name you godmother. So this is the bond that they all create with one another. You know what I'm saying. So she gonna name her godmother. I didn't feel no way about it. You know, I understood. You know, they had been together longer because you know I, I wanted to be the godmother, but I understand her and Tokyo are closer. You know, her and Tokyo are closer, and they got a they so you know they lived and died in L.A. together. We we fine. I'm I'm not I'm not hurt. I'm not bitter. Come on, go. Hurry up. I'm not bitter about it anymore. You know. <laughs> But I could have been a good godmother. I'm just letting y'all know. I could have been a good godmother to Nairobi's baby, Ibizia. That's what they were going to name him, Ibizia. You know, he bigger than a city. He's a whole fucking island, Ibizia. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So they in there screaming and laughing and dancing and drinking their little drinks, celebrating and everything. And Lisba and Stockholm come in like, what's going on? She said, I'm about to have a baby. And baby, we didn't even know you had a boyfriend. You pregnant right now? No, not right now, but I'm going to have me a baby. Now, she never did tell Lisba that the professor is supposed to be baby daddy. She didn't tell Lisba that. But for right now, we're going to celebrate and dance like fools, dance like girls, like the three cups on the damn tarot card. We're going to dance and drink this drink because we having a baby. We're going to create a big-ass family, you know, for our family. No more boring-ass Christmases for us. So, Marcel and her talking to the professor, like, are you thinking? He's like, yeah, I got to think. He said, because I don't know what the fuck is going on. You know what I'm saying? I, I got two kids coming up out of this. And I said, two? Wait a minute, Professor Elizabeth pregnant. Did nobody else catch that the professor said he's going to have two kids? Marcel didn't say nothing like two kids. Where's two? Who are you finna? Elizabeth finna have a baby too. Is she pregnant right now? Huh. Questions. I got questions. Well, the one baby, Nairobi's baby, is Bill. Ain't finna happen. It ain't finna happen, y'all. So, professors like, look, we need to think. We need to think about what the fuck we went wrong. What the fuck we wrong? When did when did the first mistake happen? So they flash back. The first mistake happened when when Denver had to take the red cases out there to the cops. Gandhi was supposed to be the person to do that. That was the way to get his ass out the bank. I remember I could tell y'all I couldn't figure out how they were gonna get his ass out the bank. That's how they were supposed to get him out the bank, but that didn't happen. Denver ended up doing it. That was the first mistake. The second mistake was when Lisba couldn't climb the fucking tree. That was the second mistake. And I wonder if she couldn't climb the tree because she was pregnant. They had been practicing this this whole time, but she couldn't get up that damn tree. So I always wonder, is she pregnant? So the car next to me is jamming, so I might just dance a little bit, y'all. I hope y'all can hear that really good because I don't want YouTube to give me YouTube strike. I don't know, he's jamming over there. Go ahead on, sir. Da -da -da. Okay, so yeah. So now the professor's thinking, like, what all went wrong? He flashed back in his head of everything is going wrong. Meanwhile, in the bank, Arturo, he's sitting down there trying to convince the governor that this is our time to fight back, to take action, to take over. The governor's like, fuck you. He said, governor of all people, you should be the one that's going to be willing to stand and die for everybody in this bank. You're the governor of the Bank of Spain. The governor say, if you somebody want to live and die for this bank, they going to stand your ass up. Because I ain't about to do it. Get the fuck out of here with that shit. <laughs> you don't put... No, I ain't, I don't know here the peer pressure. I don't I don't know what the fuck you on, but I don't know here the peer pressure. If you want to die, then stand your ass up and do it. Now, meanwhile, Mama Tika, I forgot her name, the one who was with uh, Nairobi, taking care of her. Mama Tika, she and her ear hustling. Um, Julia, of course, is in there ear hustling. Amanda is in there ear hustling. 
Amanda is looking at Arturo like this motherfucker here. I'm telling you, I think it's all coming back to her that he sexually assaulted her. It's all coming back. And she looking at him like, you disgusting piece of bio, you little piece. That's how the look on her face. Except Mama Tika, she's interested in what's going on. You know, Julia, for some reason, I don't know why Julia asked don't never be like really, really listening. She knows shit going on, but she ain't trying to make herself part of the conversation. That's what she should have did. She should have tried to make herself part of the conversation. Now, Matthias is up there. He watching them. He watching the door. He's on nervous ass. He like he's keeping his eye on the hostages, and every time they speak, he like shut the fuck up. I'm gonna shoot you. I'm gonna kill you. And he ain't doing nothing but throwing idle threats. They know damn well he ain't finna shoot nobody in her. You know, and Arturo knew it too. He was like he the weakest one. Go on, get a little man. We can rush him. All of us together. Well, Mama Tika, she had the phone that Alicia Sierra sent the nurse to Nairobi. She been holding on to this phone forever. Okay, and she gives the phone to Arturo. She's like, "Look here, I know that we can do this. <laughs> I've been holding on to this. If you the man, I'm gonna help you push your vision through." She gives him the phone, but he's a weak ass. He gives the phone to Michael. This is the little nerdy boy who always gotta get nervous and have to throw up and take a shit. Yeah, him. He gets the phone to him, and he tells him, "Ain't nobody gonna suspect you, so you doubt enough." Like I said, now Amanda is peeping all this stuff. Why Julia? Because Julia went out there in the hallway to go use the bathroom again. And she basically telling them, I need a fucking gun. I need to get busy in there. Something go down, I need a fucking gun. And they arguing and debating with her like, no, take your ass back in there. She's supposed to be Manila. Take your ass back in there. This is not what your role. She's like, give me a fucking gun. Okay? They finally caved in and gave her a gun. She goes back in. So she done missed the whole cell phone transaction that they had here. He got he got uh, Michael to call the phone number that's in the phone who happens to be Alicia Sierra. Now, back in the tent, you know, Alicia's like, wait a minute, what the fuck is going on? We hearing gunshots, we hearing grenades. What the hell is going on in her? So, she stepped up to Tamayo. Like, what the, what's up? Okay, what's going on? And you know, Alicia has been pushing to go in and attack their ass from the beginning. She didn't want to play games. She didn't want to negotiate. She wanted to go in there and go hard. And Tamayo kept telling her, no. This is not how we do things. That's what he kept telling her. That's what he kept telling her. The, um, they couldn't do this. There's a man on a bike <laughs> crossing the highway. <laughs> and so uh, he finally broke down and said, okay, fine. Gandhi is Gandhi. He out. He loose. And they're like, what the fuck you mean he out and he loose? You know, her and Angel like, what the hell? You got us up here doing this little fake ass truce. You won't let us intervene. The protocol is for us to intervene when we hear gunshots and fires. Ain't, ain't none of that shit happening. What the fuck is going on? So he was like, look her. I told him to stand the fuck down. That's what I told him to do. But he said he was not going to obey my orders. He was going to defend himself. I can't fight a man for defending himself. You know, so at least you're like, okay, really, okay, this is all about you. So, because if he go in there and he kill him, he take them all out, then you can say that you the one, you become the hero. You the one that did that. You know what I'm saying? And then, but if he fail, you can say, oh, well, I told him don't do it. He's trying to cover your ass. We need to go in there now and attack. So they get the phone call from Arturo and, and they said they were going to have like a regular conversation. How they get to have this whole fucking conversation? I, I don't know. <laughs> but like I said, Julia wasn't in the room. And basically Arturo tell him Gandhi escaped. Uh, we in the library. We got one man watching us. He will weak link. Ain't nobody man in the hallways. If you're going to attack, this is the time to attack now. So Alicia, like, what the fuck are we waiting on? Tamaya was like, I can't do it. She said, man, go some goddamn balls. Let's do this. Come on now. So Tamayo agrees. We finna team up, suit up, and we going in. So he gets Suarez together. Suarez ain't been around in a minute. At least we ain't seen Suarez. Suarez got Suarez together. Got the whole tactical team. We finna go in here 
we finna do the damn thing, we finna turn it the fuck up. At least you go back in there with Lesbo. Like, okay, so what's the, what the fuck? You know, he was asking me about my husband and, and how, if he loved me, was he disgusted by me? Nah, bitch, he wasn't. We fucked all the damn time, every which kind of way. I know you and the professor only do it in missionary style, but you know, y'all weak like that, y'all boring like that and shit. And, um, so I really think that Elizabeth's pregnant. I'm just thinking. Um, so they, they had that little back and forth again. And I don't know. I forgot what she said to Alicia Sierra. But Alicia grabbed her motherfucking head like, bitch, what you say to me? What you say? She snatched her all over the back of her neck like, I will, I will fuck you up with your face and into this table. That's how she looked at her like that. She said, I don't know how the fuck. Uh, she said, I don't know what the fuck you thought you was doing. And so Elizabeth said, I was praying a diversion. Hey! Get on your side of the road. She said, I was creating a diversion. She wasn't really creating a diversion. She was really going to panic and, and flip. But let's go on her let her think it's a diversion. At least say, nah. Your man closed. That's what that is. And I'm going to find out. Trust me, I'm going to find out. I'm going to find out how he know everything that he know. Okay? I'm going to find out. So, now she on to Lisba that something else is going on. When she found out the copper was involved, it's going to be hell to come pay the captain, baby. It's going to be hell to come pay the captain. So, we go back into the bank. The professor, he tells Palermo, hey, get control of the situation. We need to stall this motherfucker for a little bit. The professor on the other end is working on trying to figure out how to hit the cops in the best way possible. Okay, we was able to track the plane that showed up over there to get Rio. You know, the plane came from Algeria, right? Alright, so what at the point where the plane took off, it was an empty fucking desert. There had to be a car to come there, trace the car. We're gonna find out where that car came from. We gonna hit them motherfuckers like they ain't never been here before. He put Marcel on a plane. We got four hours to get there. I was like, four hours, baby. We we need more time. We need less. Time. You gotta do it faster than that. We ain't got four hours. We ain't got four hours for you to hit them hard because inside the bank, Gandia is acting a motherfucking fool. Tokyo, she's still down in the panic room. You know, all strung up and shit. The professor tell Palermo, I know where the panic room is at. It's not on the blueprints at all. The safest place for the governor to be, if something went down, it's because it's not about protecting the old. It's next to his office. It's the closest space. So he said the panic room was on the other side of the bathroom. Just trust me. Y'all need to get into there and get his ass because that's where he likes to go escape at and make sure that motherfucker don't go nowhere. You know what I'm saying? So Palermo's supposed to be, you know, trying to get him... I guess back to the panic room or what have you. So he negotiates a deal with Gandhi. He gonna let him walk out of that room with a gun to Nairobi's head. And so he can get away and he that we get back Nairobi. That's supposed to be a deal. And I don't know why you trust him that this dude is gonna do that. Because everybody mad at Palermo anyway. Motherfucker, you the reason why this shit happened. They said, you the reason why he is set free. And why Nairobi is damn near two sh sh shakes from dead. You know what I'm saying? So, um, they do that. You know, he he walks out the room. He grabs Nairobi. She hemmed up. She weak. Cause, you know, she's been losing blood. And her stitches are coming loose and her hand, he shot her hand off and thing. She losing blood fast, so she getting real weak. And he walking out. They all got guns on him. He said, no, y'all motherfuckers need to lower y'all guns. I would tell you to put it down, but they might get a little bit too excited and I might, you know, fuck over our negotiations and shit like that. So just go on and lower them. Everybody lower their guns except for them. Except for them. Now, Denver, you know, of course, he's the macho man. Back in, you know, back in the day, uh, when Julia first joined the crew, you know, Denver went in there to talk to her about becoming a woman. Have you always felt 
uh, have you, uh, are you gay too? You like, you like men? Have, does it have, that's the way it's always been. When we was out running around, shooting and killing and robbing stuff, was you always into men? It, it, you know, when did you feel like you was a woman? And you know, Juanito was the exact name, who was now Julia, Julia, Julio. It was like, um, yeah, I've always been a woman. They went to that whole conversation about how she always felt like she won. We go out there and we party and we kick it and we kill and we rob and we shoot and we steal. And I come back home and put my lipstick on, smoke my joint, and feel all lady like, feel all party. You know what I'm saying? Um, so this has always been me. Um, and then, like, she did a little joke that she used to that, that she was in love with him, and that's why. But it was supposed to be just a joke. I ain't sure about that, though. I ain't sure about that. But I don't know, for some reason, I thought that he was going to ask to see a penis. <laughs> that's what I thought the question was going to be. Not that it was your gay. I thought he was going to ask about the penis, but it didn't. Because I still want penis gate to happen with Arturo. <laughs> I, want, I want it to be like a crying game moment. And then Julia fuck Arturo up. That's what I wanted to be, like, for real. Okay. But anyway, they walking down this hallway and first, like first Denver wouldn't lower that fucking gun. And uh, he was like, no, all y'all motherfuckers lower your goddamn guns. You know what I'm saying? So, they got him to lower the gun. And um, I, I just won't. She told Helsinki and Palermo fuck him up. Kill him dead. Kill him twice if you have to. And then she was teasing Gandhi. I, I hope that you get killed by the two gay men. I hope they really fuck you up. You know, because he's steady out there calling him Zinsky fatty and shit like that. He ain't saying shit bad about Palermo. Because he know Palermo's crazy. He ain't saying shit about him. But, you know, he's taunting him and stuff like that. He said, you know what? I'm going to go and let her go. So he releases the ropes around Nairobi. She walking down the to back to her team you know I'm sitting on pins and needles I'm outside in the, in the car just hearing it all go down on comms and stuff right she walks so walks back to the team and he say hey mutt she turns around and face him he said I told you I was going to kill you he put a single solitary bullet straight to her dome now Roby was like oh. head back one bullet to the head. I think eyes open, mouth. She dropped her knees just like that. They started firing at Gandhi. Again, this motherfucker. You got six motherfuckers shooting at you, and not one bullet hit his ass. I don't understand that. Like all that array of bullets, and he still, like he dancing through rain. He don't get touched, and he take off and run again. And you hear everybody scream. It was like a slow motion scream. It was like. Those type of screams. That's what you, you heard it. Even though no sound was coming out. But you heard it. Everybody in the library was like. What's going on? You know what I'm saying? I, I, I didn't understand. I didn't know where I was at. The tears were just falling down my motherfucking face, y'all. And I was boohooing. But real thug tears. They was coming and coming fast. It's like, I, they, they, they was coming out of my face. And I was like, not my girl. Not my girl. I, I couldn't take the pressure. I couldn't take the pressure. At this time, you heard, you see Tokyo down there, she heard gunshots. She heard all the screams. But God was just standing there. He, he is void of emotion at this point. But God, I go, you better get that motherfucker. I want everybody to kill him. Helsinki, but I want Bagada to get him first. Oh! <sighs> the professor was going to have a baby. He was going to have a baby. With Nairobi. When he learned of Nairobi's death. Oh, he need to take it to him and take him to a horn. I just, I just. I didn't even know how to even come talk to y'all about this. It's, it was heart wrenching for me. The pressure. All oh, the pressure. Y'all, that's been Money Heist. 
Oh, goodness gracious. Nairobi is gone. Lower the flag. Somebody lower the flag. I would pull out a little liquor, but I'm riding in my car and I don't drink. See y'all next week. See y'all next week.